Matt, welcome back to the shop and we're back on the Red Bull and Fags. So sit down, relax if you aren't already. This is a shop chat. Yes, I smoke menthols. Why do I smoke menthols? Because it was actually by accident. Um, I went away on site with work and the local, we basically went to an industrial site and the local shop didn't have anything but menthols or some really horrible I think they were lucky strikes which are just fucking shite any road so uh, I got onto the menthols and then I found out there was another reason good reason is when you're when you don't have a fag and you get used to menthols and then everything oh, normal fags taste like dog shit and when you get on to you know just if you go somewhere and you've got like three fags left but your mate's got like 20 you're like it's all right I'll just smoke I'll just cane through these as normal and then I can just nick his. When you've got menfuls and stuff, you don't like their dog shit fags, so you kind of just, you know, be a bit more cautious. And don't smoke as much. <laughs> Some fucking silly excuse like that. So, your gears that move, your movable gears, so if we bring this back in like so, your movable gears, these ones here, run along the selector forks, if I can find them. There they are. Hiding behind that bag. So these selector forks sit on here like this and they run backwards and forwards. Let me bring you in to make this a bit clearer. There we go. So they basically move laterally like this. And you can see there's some free play in here and you have a shaft that kind of keeps everything all tickety-boo like so. And these gears move like so. And then this actual there's a dog on here there's a protrusion that's sticking out there if you can see it from that angle you can see it just there that protrusion protrusion rides in these tracks on your selector drum so if i try and do this accurately like that you can see that as i move, rotate oh fucking hell <laughs> as i rotate this drum these gears like that you see it moves and obviously this is all held together by bearings and what have you if I turn it that way we'll get some bit more light on it and you can see that as it rolls around these tracks when it stays in these fucking tracks like so as I rotate this drum round it moves right it, it engages and disengages gears like so so there it's gonna lock to that one like so when I move this around it will move out of gear and be not touching anything and then when you push it the other way it'll lock into the other gear and so on and so on and so on that's how selected mechanism so basically all you need to do is you need to turn this drum and that's what you do with your foot there's a ratchet so basically it's just like a, a ratchet for a socket um, you know a, a ratchet a fucking ratchet wrench a box not a box wrench a ratchet for fuck's sake for some reason brain fart Hey, any road, yeah, so basically as you turn this, it moves these side by side, so you're moving uh, in a um, axial um, direction or a linear, a linear movement while these things can still spin away. So as these things spin, you can still move them side by side because it slides along the shaft. All is good. Now, if your gearbox is in gear, if your gearbox is in gear, he says, Something is jamming, jamming, like so, and it tries to lock into gear, like that. It's been a wanker, obviously, because it's not all held together. If it's if it's jumping out of gear, um, you've got a bit of a problem here because it shouldn't. There should be no lateral movement because if you look on your selector drum, try and get the fucker out. Right now we're all locked up. It's because it's not put together properly that I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. But as long as we don't break anything, we'll be all good. Oh, and as a side note, there we go. As a side note, Suzuki do not sell. The only gear they do not sell is first gear on the output shaft for this fucking gearbox. How bloody annoying is that? Any road. If you look at this, the way this um, dog rides in these tracks, there is very little side plane there whatsoever. Absolutely fuck all. And that is not enough to pop your gear out. If your gears are popping out, that basically means that this drum is, a, is, is allowed to rotate. So a lot of the times, if you're slipping out of gear, it's because your ratcheting mechanism 
with your follower, your cam, your um, shift of cam, and the actual follower, that spring, that detent spring for the follower, which basically locks it in one position to another. Usually there's a fault there or something like that. Um, but people take it into their ultimate wisdom to back, uh, to undercut gears. So what the fuck is an undercut gear? So if you look, and we'll have to do master of zoom again. If you, oh, we nearly fucked there. If you look at that gear dog there, these are perpendicular. So that surface and this surface are at right angles. Yeah. But if you look on these ones here, someone has already undercut them. Can you see there, right in there, that these are tapered back? You see there, look, they're cut. So they lock like that. They are tapered back to meet each other. You can see where they've cut that section out. You see it there, right, right in there. You can see where they've cut that section out. Yeah, you can see it all the way around. Someone's already undercut these gears. So this is... Uh, that'll be six. This is fourth and fifth gear they've actually undercut with. Six gear is absolutely fine. Six gear. All the other gears don't have it. It's just these two gears they obviously seem to think they are having a problem with. Um, why is, is this a good thing to undercut gears or not? Well, all the fucking uh, workshops you go to these machine shops are going to say, yes, it's perfectly fine and all the rest of it. Well, you are covering up pro one problem with another. A uh, gear strength in its teeth and in the dogs, where are we with there? So, your dogs are like this like so now the loading across this tooth is pretty much the same all across because we're not like gear teeth we're not increasing the radius away from the center of rotation with gears if you have your hub in the center and then you have a gear tooth like this as you move further away the torque increases um so obviously there's higher torque here than there is at the root so if you were undercutting gears this would be a bad thing because these are dogs and these are running laterally, that's all confusing now. If Because they're running laterally, it's not so much of a problem. But what you are doing is, this is your original gear, dog, like so. And what you're doing is you're undercutting it like this. Which basically means now, this, this is the strength of this entire dog now. And you've got to remember that the loading that these gears take, these dogs, is lateral. So maybe that side under acceleration and that side under engine braking. And what you've done is you've made this cross section here not much different, you know, the, the undercut on these gears isn't absolutely horrific. But they have made basically that bit of the gear. Now a lot of undercutting is like this, like these ones on this RG500. It's like that, but still this point here is now the weakest point. The other thing is as well, the whole way it's meant to work is they're using wedges. <coughs> so if you have one dog like this, and you have the other dog that interlocks with it like this, then you are going to have to create a counter torque. If these two are pressing into each other, that's your force and that's your resistive force, that's your load in a sense. Um, they won't back out for the simple fact is, is that it's a wedge. These are actually ramming into each other instead of trying to ram away from each other. You would have to have a lateral force going that way to separate these, and it's quite a large lateral, lateral force that increases the further you climb up the ram. In a sense, this is how slipper clutches work. So you might think, oh, well, it's the same thing. But the problem with this is, is one, you are weakening the gear, and you are weakening both of these, not gears, dog teeth, uh, if they are dogs on dogs, which is the way you have to do it, you don't do undercutting where there are recesses because you'd have to re you'd have to do dog legging um, undercutting on them, and you don't do that. But um, the fact of the matter is, is the whole thing shouldn't be forcing out of gear, and you've got another problem somewhere else. Generally speaking, um, the other thing is, is when you are switching gears, is you do have this. Um, thrust loading that is going out every time you do change out of gear which can put a, additional stress on either the shaft the bearings or other gears in that series especially if you're going the other way um, is undercutting a good idea I no, I don't think it's a good idea whatsoever I think it, you there is an other there is an other another problem the fact of the matter is is that with a normal if we just reproduce this with a normal dog 
So there's your dog there. We'll say this is the driving one in red. And you've got a blue one here, like so. And this is your driven one. Yeah, awesome. Um, for them to slide out laterally, you have an engagement problem. How does this lateral movement behave? This is generally with your, well, it's your selector forks. Either your selector forks have worn too thin, um, so there's a lot of free play in there. The selected selector forks, these bad boys here, what they do is they apply a side load. So if you look at your gear like this, they apply a side load going, just say it's being forced that way. If these are really thin and rattling around, then there's a lot of lateral movement, which means the gear can sprag out of gear and you get a, basically a neutral or it just pops out of gear. Um, but if you are, if these are all in good shape and all that, obviously this isn't the one that's the right size. I should get the one that's the right size, idiot. These selector forks here sit like this. If you've got too much lateral plane, if you look in your manual, it will tell you how to measure these and what the clearances should be. There should be some play in there. They should not be tight. Um, thermal expansion reasons and all the rest of it. I'm actually getting the thing to slide in there properly. But this is locked, or this should be locked by, your, by these dogs in your selector drum. So the only thing, if this wants to try and thrust out, if this wants to try to go that way and disengage, that means that this selector fork has got to be able to move with it. If that selector fork is moving, then that means that your selector drum, where this dog engages, is rotating. And if that is rotating, then there is the things that are there, the mechanisms like your detent cam follower and your cam, and the spring, if you follow that back down, that detent cam follower, uh, where is that? This here, you can see this is our detent cam follower, this bad boy here, which usually has a spring on it. You can see where the lug goes for the spring. When you put your um, selector drum in here, like so, where's our chocolate starfish? It should be in that clutch section. So here is your selector drum, you can see there. And then here is our um, cam. And basically what happens is, is as this does this, this pulls against the spring, which goes around there. Let's put the spring on, fuck it. So you can see the way this works is as I turn this, you can see that this cam follower here on this cam and there's this spring. If you can see that it has to go a long way. So basically there's first gear, there's neutral, there's second, there's third, there's fourth, there's fifth and there's sixth and there's a stop that basically stops you going any further. And then you go back down the gearbox, second, neutral, first. So when you're in neutral, you're there, when you click down, so you're rotating in this, to you guys, in this orientation, that's clockwise, so we're going this way around, that's first, and then you go up the other way to go into second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Now you can see that's quite a steep gully to climb and your selector forks that ride in these grooves that are attached to your movable gears have to ride in these runs like so. You see that pin at the bottom that has to ride in there. For this to move laterally so your gear wobbles out, either your shaft isn't there like that, which is not the case, you know, that, that, that movement there is fuck all. We'll measure that actually when we do the, um, when we do the uh, measurement and um, inspection side of all this but basically as you can see you go around and bang 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 and you can see that your bigger gears so someone's done fourth and fifth gear undercutting it's basically having to rotate your selector drum that much which is an entire uh, gear change generally if this is fucking up in your gear your engine is spranging out of gear it's because this whole thing has to rotate for that to happen so if your gear is your engine is basically kicking itself out of gear Generally this spring is the fucker, or maybe this is worn, smaller than it should be, or something crazy like that. So undercutting gears, not a fan of it, it weakens the dogs and you're gonna have, or there's a good possibility you're gonna have more problems down the road. Literally down the road. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.